All right, section four on the compositions of transformations. Basically, we're just using anything that we've learned in the first three sections, whether a reflection, translation, or rotation, and then we just do it more than once. So it's consisted of two what we call isometries in a way. And one of these, uh, I'm not going to really use this term a whole lot, but we call it glide reflection. Basically, if I look at this foot, it has a translation, and then it's followed by a reflection over a line. So that would be one of the compositions that we're going to do um, called the glide reflection. So you don't really need to know this term, but it's just something that's used commonly um, when building things or laying down a floor and stuff like that. So let's just look at some examples. That'll help us make sense here. So first one, I have a quadrilateral BGTS with the following vertices. I got that graph right there. Um, so you're going to graph that. And then it's image after a translation along the vector 5, 0 and a reflection in the x-axis. So you just deal with one thing at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is the translation followed by the reflection. And we'll just go in the order that it gives us. So a couple of things with the translation. You can either do it by the points or you can just do it with counting. I'll do the first one by the point. So if I look at B, it was at negative 3, 4. If I translate it along the vector 5, 0, I basically just add that to the x and add that to the y. So I'd add 5 to the x. So if I added 5 to negative 3, now I'm at 2. And if I added 0 to 4, I'm just at 4. So 2, 4. Or I could have just counted. I could have went to B on my graph and counted over right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 0. Well, I'm right there. So that would be B prime. So I would do that for all four points for my translation. I like to just count. Um, but I'm going to write all my new points at the end. And I'll show you why. So if I'm at G, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right, 0 up. There's G prime, C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, C prime, and S1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it would be S prime. And then we just connect our dots. There we go. Basically just move five units to the right. And I'm going to write down all my new points because that's going to help me with my reflection here. So Let's see, we got G prime, and we got T prime, and S prime. So G prime is at 4, 3 now, and C prime is at 4, 1, and S <coughs> prime is at 1, 2. Okay, now it asks me to reflect it in the, the x-axis. So remember, if we reflect in the x-axis, what happens is, all that changes is just our y, right? So we have um, the opposite sign in the y's. So I could just write all my new ones. So now b prime would change into b prime prime because I'm basically taking the image of the image. So if I take a look at that, well, let's just write what b prime was. We found that to be 2, 4 after we translated it. Now we're going to reflect it. So what changes? Well, just the y, right? The x stays the same when I reflect on the x-axis. So just the y is changing to the opposite sign. And I might just go ahead and do all my points right away. So now G prime is going to be, if I look here, all that changes is the Y. So it's 4, negative 3. And then we got T prime and S prime. So T prime would be 4, negative 1. And S prime would, or prime prime, my fault. These are all the prime primes, aren't they? S prime prime would be 1, negative 2. And just like you could before, you can just count if you're reflecting the x-axis, which would be right here. Like t prime, t prime prime would be 1 below since t prime is 1 above. And that should work, right? 4, negative 1. So t prime prime. And I just graph all these. So b prime prime, 2, negative 4. Did I do that right? Two, four, yep. And g prime prime, 4, negative 3. And lastly, s prime prime, 1, negative 2. So just reflected off that translation. Okay, so you just do two steps. So just go in the order. So in this case, I translated and then I reflected. Um, let's not go through this whole example just because we just looked at one. We should all know to this point what to do. So the first thing would be is I would translate it negative 1, 5. So I'd move left 1 and up 5 for all those points. I could probably just quick do that. So left one up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that'd be T prime, 
u1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. u prime, so left one, up 5, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we would translate it first, followed by a rotation 180 degrees. And remember, for a rotation, all that happens is they both negate, or they go to the opposite sides. Okay, so for example, T prime, which right now is at 1, 4, would become T prime prime, which would be negative 1, negative 4. And if I just did that quick, T prime prime, and I would just do that for all of those. So V prime would become, instead of 2, 1, it would be negative 2, negative 1. V prime and U, instead of being 4, 3, it'd be negative 4, negative 3. So we ran through that pretty quick. Okay, so just do one at a time. Translation and then the rotation. Okay, we got a couple new properties here. Our first property is if we reflect an object with two parallel lines. So basically, we reflect over the M and then the N. So we do one at a time. We have a little rule here. So for example, if I would reflect over line M, right, it's the same distance perpendicular on the other side for each point. Let's take a look. It'd be something like this. I'm just doing a rough scale there. And then if I would reflect it over the N next, so that means each point would be the exact same distance perpendicular reflected. So that'd be something like this. What do we notice about the very first image to our brand new image, going from here to here? It looks like it just slid, right? It just translated over, it just took a slide over there. So if you reflect it twice over parallel lines, all it does is it translates. And it translates a certain amount. It translates, if we take a look at it, we know the distance between these two parallels is two inches. And I could probably take a pretty good guess. And the exact amount is four inches. So all it does is it translates twice the amount between the lines. So it translates twice the amount between the parallels. So basically, I could say, if it asked me what's my new image, I could say it moved four inches to the right, or it translated four inches to the right. Because that would take a while to measure all those things and reflect over both. But if I know that rule, if I reflect over two parallel lines, all it does is it just translates in the end. Because it basically reflects back to backs to it. Backs to? Back to its original image. And then lastly, we have uh, reflections with intersecting lines instead. So basically I'm going to reflect over one line and then the other. So if I reflect this over line M. At the same distance perpendicular, same distance perpendicular, I'm just doing a rough sketch here. So there'd be a, re a reflection over M, and then I would reflect that over N. So same distance about perpendicular, so about here. Same distance about perpendicular, so like here. Reflect that again. Uh, a bad drawing. Okay. All that happens is it's really a rotation. You see how this is kind of getting rotated around? about this center, and I, I can tell how many degrees it rotated. It rotated twice the amount of this angle right here, twice the amount of the angle that it made between M and N. So I could say this rotated twice that, which is what, 150, 156 degrees, and in this case, it went clockwise. Because I reflected over M first, and then N next. So it's just twice the angle measure of rotation if I do two reflections with intersecting lines. So basically those are your two rules. So with parallels it's twice the distance, with intersecting lines it's twice the angle. And that's all there is to it. So thank you for watching. Thanks, Thanks.